In lesson 10, we're going to build a customer form to present our user with a nice friendly interface for adding and editing records. We'll see how the quick form builder works. We'll learn about navigation, layout view, deleting records, and the different types of forms in Microsoft Access. So far today, we've seen how to build a table, enter and edit data in a table, and we've created a couple queries. Now, tables and queries are, of course, functional, and they're necessary for most databases, but they're not very friendly to work with, especially if you don't know access. So in this lesson, we're going to see how to set up a couple of different types of forms. Forms are used to work with data on the screen. Forms look a lot better than working directly with tables or queries. That, of course, makes it easier for you to enter, edit, and find information. And, of course, a database that's easier to use is more efficient. Here's an example of a simple customer form. You can see all the information laid out, one customer per screen. This is a lot more easy on the eyes, a lot more user-friendly, than simply dropping the user into a table and say, here, go to town. Just like if you give them an Excel spreadsheet. This is a nice user-friendly interface. Forms also provide you with additional control and security over your database. You can control which fields your end users can see and what data they can edit. If you don't want them seeing the credit limit, for example, don't put it on that form. You can keep it in the table and make a separate form for you or your managers, but your average end user doesn't have to see all of the information for every customer. You can control whether users can add data, edit data, delete records, that kind of stuff, all using forms. In later classes, we'll learn how to make buttons. So from the customer form, you can open up their contacts form or their orders form. You can do all kinds of neat stuff with forms. You can set up forms to look like existing paper forms that you might have in your current system. This way, if your users are used to entering data in a specific way on a specific paper form, you can make your on-screen form look just like it. This way, they know what data goes in what fields. Makes it easier for your users to transition from an old paper system or even old software into a new access database. You can design the forms to look however you want. You can have data from multiple tables displayed together on one form. For example, you could show a customer and all of his contact history in something called a subform. It's a form that displays inside of another form. Or you could have all of their order information show up in a subform. Or like I mentioned before, you can have different buttons to open up forms related to the form that you're on. For example, here's a customer record. I can click on the order button and that opens up the orders for that customer. We get the subforms in the expert classes, Access Expert 3, and they're really powerful. In today's class, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple customer form just to get you comfortable with form design. Over the next couple of classes, we'll be spending a lot of time on form development. Keep in mind that building forms is really more of an art than a science. You can spend many, many hours making your forms look good, and I know I'm pretty guilty of that. I've got whole lessons where I spend time just showing you how to make custom form elements, custom backgrounds. You can make your database look like Windows 95. You can make it look futuristic. All kinds of crazy stuff. I'll put some links down below in the links section you can click on. Good form design is time consuming, but it can really make your database look professional. It just takes practice, and it's something that the more you do it, the better you'll get. Now, there are two primary ways to build a form. Yeah, there's a couple of different sideways too, but the, the two big ways are layout view and design view. Now, I use design view. Design view is a little more advanced, but once you get the hang of it, you get a lot more control over your forms. Layout view is a simple way to build fast forms, but you get fewer options up front. Now, I like design view myself, and I'm going to stick with design view throughout most of this course. However, I know a lot of you who are watching this video aren't necessarily looking to be Access developers. You just want to get in there and start working with Access and build some quick forms. So I'm going to show you Layout View first, then I'm going to show you Design View in the next lesson. So if you're just curious about how to get in there and, and build a couple of quick forms, you're not looking to be an Access developer, then this lesson is for you. The rest of you, if you really want to learn Access and get your hands dirty and become a developer, you're going to want to learn Design View, and that's going to be in the next video. 
So here we are back in our database that we started earlier. And you can see my navigation pane over here. Click on the customer table. Now on the create tab, right over here you'll see a forms section. Now these are all the different ways you can build a form. All right, there's basic form, which we're going to start with. That's for layout view. Then here's form design. That's the more advanced one that I'm going to show you in the next lesson. There are some other options that I almost never use. Blank form, form wizard, all this different stuff in here. And I will talk about these things in future lessons, but these are the big two right here. Okay? Okay, so click on customer T, then come up here and click on form, the first one. Now, access just goes ahead and builds a form for you. Doesn't give you any questions, any options, just boom, there's your form. Okay? And it bases it on whatever table or query you had selected over here. Now, I personally don't like layout view. I think this is messy. It's designed for novice users to get in here and just quickly build a form. And I, I understand why Microsoft put this together. A lot of people are familiar with Excel, and they're trying to treat this almost like a spreadsheet. Okay? You can resize these objects as rows here, like click on that, and then resize it. You can resize these as columns. Okay? See that? Click here. Resize that column, resize that row. Okay, but I think this overall look is just a little messy. That's just me. It takes a lot of time to make this look good. Now here in your form, you'll see there are two components to each field. There is a label and a text box. Okay, the label is the name of that field. First name, last name, company name, and so on. Those are labels. The data goes in something called a text box. All right. Some of these fields, you'll see they have check boxes. Yes or no fields will have check boxes associated with them. You just click them on and off. All right. Now I'm in layout view, so I can see the data in here, but I can't actually edit it yet. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. If you want to change any of these labels, you can. Just click on it a second time, and you can make that say, like, first space name. Because these are labels. This is what the user is actually going to see on the screen. You're not changing the name of it. Remember, the actual name in the table, the name of the field, I want to be first name with no spaces there. But you can come in here and make these say whatever you want. These are just labels. These are just for display purposes. All right, you could just put company in here, for example, if you want to. That's not going to change anything, really. All right, you can resize these rows like that. Okay, again, I'm not very impressed with layout view. I don't use it myself. Okay, but it's a quick option to come in here and to build a form. Up top here in the form header, you've got a bit of a description. You can change that. That's also just a label, right? Customers, for example. Okay, a little picture over here. If you want that, you can delete it if you don't want it. Click on it and hit delete. Just a little image. Now, when you're happy with the way this looks, you can save it. Control S on your keyboard, or you can hit the little floppy disk in your toolbar. Right, save. I'm going to call this customer F, my customer form. Hit OK. All right, now you'll see it appears over here in the navigation pane. If you're using an older version of Access, I know in Access 2013 there was a bug when you saved an object that didn't appear right over here automatically in the navigation pane. You had to refresh it with F5. So hit the F5 key on your keyboard if you don't see your objects appear. That's an old bug. I just remembered it now because the last time I recorded this class in 2013, I mentioned it in that video. So if you're using 2013, by the way, upgrade. All right, get Microsoft 365, get the latest version of Access. Trust me, lots and lots of bug fixes that they've since gotten rid of, okay? Now that I've saved my form, I'm going to close it, and then I'm going to reopen it again. Now, when you open it this time, you're in form view. All right, we're no longer in layout view, and you can tell because you got a blinking cursor right here. All right, customer four, I can hit tab. I can start typing in data. I can make edits. Forestry Services, Inc., for example, right? Tab, tab. Okay, down here, remember these are navigation buttons, just like in tables and queries. We can move to the next record. See that? Previous record, first record, last record, new record, if you want to add a new record. Okay, start putting in the next person here, and they get assigned the next auto number. Okay, and again, you don't need to worry about what that number is. Okay, this is what your end user is going to work with, this form. They're not going to play with your tables. They're not going to play with your queries.
okay? If you want to make changes to the layout of the form, right up here under Views, drop this down, there's Form View, Layout View, and Design View. Now, we're going to talk about Design View in the next lesson. That's how I prefer to work with forms. But for now, if you want to change the layout, just go back to Layout View. Remember that? You can see you got these yellow bars around these guys right here. See? All right. And yeah, you can move things around. You can move credit limit down here, for example. There's all kinds of stuff you can do, right? Click and drag things. But again, this is not my preferred way to work with access forms. Okay, done changing the layout. Come back over here, view, form view. You go back to form view. Now, I personally like to close a form, save the changes, and then reopen it. That's a good habit to get into, especially if you're planning on becoming a developer. Take it from me. Once you start putting Visual Basic programming code behind these forms, you want to make sure you close them and reopen them so any changes take effect. All right, you don't want to flip between views. Now, as a reminder, just like queries, the data that you see here is live, okay? This information is linked to the table. So if you delete records out of here, make changes to records, it affects the data in the table. It's not a copy, it's a live view of that table's information. It's just displaying it in a nice, pretty way, okay? When you are adding a record or editing an existing record, remember you'll see the pencil over here. That indicates the record is dirty. That means it hasn't been saved to the table yet. All right, how do you save it? Well, you just simply move off the record or close the form. That will save the record to the table underneath. All right, remember, if you come in here and start editing it, now it's dirty. Okay, as soon as you close the form or move off that record, it saves the information to the table. Now, if you don't want this record, how do you delete it? Well, come over here and click on this big gray bar on the left-hand side. That's called the record selector. All right, click on that and then hit delete on the keyboard. Access will say you're about to delete one record. You can't undo this operation. Once you say, okay, you're done. That record's gone. All right, so be careful. You want to delete that? Yep. Okay, all gone. If you want to delete multiple records, I recommend going right to the table. Okay, but be careful. That's dangerous. Make sure you got good backups. Back up your data. All right, back up your data regularly, especially if it's important. Okay, I've got whole lessons on backing up your data. I'll put some links down in the link section for you. Go watch those. When you're working with your forms, you'll also find a familiar set of buttons up top here. Sort ascending, descending, the filter buttons. Right, we learned about a lot of these working with tables. You can come over here, for example, and find a state. Right-click on it equals Ohio, for example. Now you'll see just the Ohio records. We learned about sorting and filtering earlier. All right, let me unfilter that now. If you want to sort these records by last name, click on the last name field, right, and then hit sort ascending or descending or however you want them to sort. Okay. Okay, now like I said, I don't particularly like building forms this way. I wanted to show you the quick way for you non-developers who want to get in here and just quickly work with access. But for the rest of us, I'm going to delete the customer form. All right, click on customer F, hit delete on the keyboard. Are you sure you want to permanently delete customer F? Yep, and now it's gone. In the next lesson, we're going to make a customer form with design view. I want to really quickly though, show you the other form options that are here and just explain what they do real quick. So click on customer T, all right? Now, blank form just gives you a blank form, no controls. That's it, that's all you got, blank form. That's not that useful, is it? All right, get rid of that, close that. All right, click, what's the next thing over here? There's the form wizard. The form wizard's not too bad, all right? It'll ask you, okay, what fields do you want on your form? All right, customer ID, click on that one, bring it over there. First name, last name. Let's say I don't care about the address. I just want their email and their discount rate. All right, because sometimes you can make specialized forms. Like I mentioned earlier, you might have a form for your front end people to use and a different one for the managers with all of the fields on it. Okay. All right, hit next. How do you want it to look? There's different options in here for how you want it to appear. Let's go with columnar. That's the default right there, columnar, however you pronounce it, right? Next, okay, open the form to view or enter information or modify the forms design. Well, we haven't gotten into form design yet, so let's pick the first one and then hit finish, all right? And then it builds the form for you. 
Very similar to what we did before. It puts you in layout mode like this. Okay? Quick and dirty way to build a form. But again, I don't want this. Let's just close it and delete it. Are you sure? Yep. Again, just a quick tour of the different types of forms. All right, customer T, create. What else we got here? Navigation forms. Now, there's navigation forms that let you make forms to open other forms. I'm going to show you how to use these in Access Beginner 7. I spend about 10, 15 minutes showing you how they work. But personally, I don't like them. I like to build my own menu forms using my own buttons. Here's an example of my tech help free template, for example. I like to build my own menus like this, right? Customer list, see this? Customer form. I don't like the built-in navigation form, so I'm going to spend a little time showing them to you, but I don't personally use them. All right, what else we got under here? More forms. There's this thing called a multiple items form. That looks like this. All right, let me close this field list. We'll talk about the field list in the next lesson. All right, this is the multiple items form. Now, it comes in pretty big. I'm going to just resize one of the rows like that. All right, like that. Another name for this is a continuous form. You'll hear this called a continuous form in Access Speak. Now, I use continuous forms all the time, but I don't build them this way. Again, I don't really use the wizards that come in Access. I like to build things by hand. Here's what my continuous form looks like. I think you'll agree this looks a lot nicer. Okay. <laughs> so again, I don't want that. Close it. Save changes. No. What else we got? Create more forms. All right. We got a split form. Split forms are okay. Split form gives you the layout view on top and then a spreadsheet view down here on the bottom. It looks like a table and you can move through the records this way. Eh, again, I don't particularly care for this. I don't use it myself. I like taking my continuous form and making it so you can double click on a customer and it opens up the customer form. That's how I like to build them. And again, I cover how to do all of this in the videos that come with the tech help free template. I'll put links down below if you want to go watch that now, but I will cover this throughout the entire course throughout the series of these classes. All right, you will learn it. I just go over it faster in the template video. So again, split forms, not my favorite. I don't usually use those either. And the last option in here, modal dialogue, that's for making little pop-up windows, usually to give some kind of warning or some kind of information or to get a few bits of data from the user and do something else with it. Again, I don't use these. I, I will show you how to make modal dialogue boxes, but we're not going to use this more forms option. Okay. So that is a quick tour of all the different kinds of form building buttons that are in here all the different ways you can build a form, all right? Except the one way that I personally prefer, and that's by using form design. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. Form design lets you get in here and actually position all of these elements exactly where you want them, resize them, move things around, and so on. We'll talk about that next.